Hello, YouTube, and greetings to you. We got here a Lexus IS 250, and I believe it's of the 2010 model year variety. Uh, customers here today stating that the check engine warning illuminator is illuminated. So let's get the scan tool on this and see what's going on here. Okay, um, well after starting the engine, there is no longer a check engine light. Let's try it again. Starting the engine. Yeah, okay. There's an oil maintenance required light on. Maybe that's what these people are talking about. And there's a tire warning indicator light on. So let's plug into this thing and see if there's any DTCs that are stored in any of the modules. All right, scan tool is uh, in the ECM. Let's see if it has any codes here. Current codes. Hmm, nothing in current. Let's go into history and see if there's a latent code in there that's hanging out. Yeah, no codes present. Okay, well, no codes present, no check engine light. I guess that about wraps it up. Thank you guys for watching. See you later. I'm just kidding, you guys. I wouldn't do that to you. That's terrible. So anyway, I took this thing out on the road for a quick spin around the block just to make sure that the light did not come on while driving. And I need to go back to the well now and figure out what the actual complaint is because I don't have a check engine light and there seems to be no problem here. And my seatbelt's not on. Okay, got that seatbelt thing handled. Uh, we're back at the shop now. Like I said, I'm gonna go and uh, talk to the advisors and see if they have any information for me or um, I'm gonna go ahead and bet that these people are just here for this oil change and uh, I have been grossly miscommunicated with. All right, we're back in the building. Let's pop in the hood. Uh, I just had a little, little chit chat with the service advisor. She came up to me as I was pulling in and uh, she agrees that perhaps they don't know what lights they're talking about. Um, that being said, she's going to go ahead and call them back, which she's probably doing right now, to uh, just verify that they're not speaking about this tire light and this uh, oil indicator illuminator thing right here. So I'm waiting to hear word on that, but uh, we will determine what the issue is shortly. All right, let's take a look under here and see if we can find an engine. I think there's one under this plasticky thing. Okay, we've got a brand new battery. That's tight, okay. Terminals are cleanish, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. <sighs> Nothing's standing out to me here. Looks pretty good. I had the scan tool doing a full system scan. Let's go back in and see if it gave us any uh, anything to go off of. My uh, service advisor manager lady came by and said that she called them and they said that the check engine light came on while driving and it lost power. And my second time with scanning this thing yielded a cylinder six misfire detected trouble code. Let's see, there's something in ABS, uh, uh, engine control system fault, interesting, and battery or voltage too high or low. All right, a couple things in history in the airbag. Mm, a radio malfunction or media malfunction of some sort. All right, well, it did yield a, uh, a voltage code and a misfire code. I wonder what it could be. Here it is, let's go into freeze frame data. And we wanna do this 1241. What I'm starting to think here, and I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and speculate, is that it's got a, a typical Toyota Lexus ignition coil fault issue going on and that the uh, the coil started letting itself go while they were driving developed a misfire which would have resulted in loss of engine power and would have resulted in a flashing check engine light that's what i speculate is going on here just based on a lot of experience and this seems to be how this uh, symptom has translated but that is yet to be determined now right here i'm in the abs module under that c1241 voltage code and what we're looking at is stored data uh, from the moment that the, the code was set. And what we can see here, oh no, no, they weren't moving. It says they were in park, all right. Let's see what else is going on here. Yeah, they were in park, they were not moving. Uh, it says the vehicle was stationary when the trouble code set. Again, this is not exactly lining up with what they were saying. 
because the story goes that they were driving and it lost power. Uh, let's see, engine torque was negative 811 newton meters. Hmm. Let's see, throttle was closed. Oil pressure was zero. Okay, so this uh, this C code was set with the engine off. Okay, let's back out of this one and see what kind of stored data we have for the other trouble codes that are in this ABS module. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the same for that cylinder six misfire code. And let's, we're gonna see what the engine in the car was doing at the moment that that code was set. Okay, again, uh, the vehicle was stationary. Nobody was going anywhere. Uh, da -da, da -da, nothing here. Yep, engine off, no throttle position, no oil pressure. So this code was set during a key on event before the engine started. That may have been caused by a uh, the moment that that battery was replaced. We, we just saw that there is a fairly new battery. Um, I did not see that the terminals had been cleaned very well, so I am going to actually go back and address that. But let's go and uh, let's go back into the engine module and head into the freeze frame data for that misfire code and then we will see there's freeze frame we'll see what the engine was doing at that point in time when that code was set i mean no codes for you know i know they're not present now let's uh oh uh that's not going to give me freeze frame on this we'll do all system codes again and we'll pull that code back up again okay there is our p0306 misfire detected No, I don't want the graph of what everybody else did. I want freeze frame data. It's not gonna give me freeze frame data because the this DTC is not current and set. Nope, unfortunately, I don't get freeze frame data for that uh, misfire code. Let's go into live data and see if I can detect any misfires manually. I'm scrolling through live data, just kind of looking for any of these PIDs that stand out to me. I don't see see anything so far that's looking out of the ordinary eh, voltage is a little low 13.3 I like to see 14 while running but it's still within acceptable ranges uh, let's see if I've got a misfire count here air fuel ratio is good okay so here's here's what I think has happened with this car I think they had a battery put in at one time and it triggered those uh, those low voltage codes in the ABS module. Kind of no big deal. Um, we saw that they're not current. Those are, uh, those are history codes. They're just in there kind of hanging out right now. Um, I think they did in fact end up with a misfire while driving which would have kicked down their check engine light. That condition is no longer present. And I would bet that I've got an eroded spark plug gap and it's sort of taxed. Uh, those I say taxed I made those uh, made the coils work at a duty cycle higher than than what they should be running at and I, I think that one of those coils kind of let go while they were driving and it gave them the symptoms that they described so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull one coil and one spark plug let's get an idea of what the spark plug gap looks like just to kind of validate my suspicions here and then I will I'll make a recommendation based on that and it appears to me that the number two coil is gonna be the easiest one to get out. So let's lose this cover and get this air box or air intake tube off. Let's pull out number two right here and, uh, and see what the condition looks like. Actually, you know what? Let's pull number six. I can get number six out without removing too much other stuff. Out little clip, there we go. Let's get this thing out of here. Come off, plug. Exercise extreme caution when prying on connectors because we don't want to break them.
Okay, let's get this plug out. Okay, here's what we got. These are Denso Iridiums. They look like they're three pronged for three times the horsepower. Uh, they've been here for a while. There's a little bit of carbon tracking around the insulator. Not much, they're not terrible. Uh, I can see perhaps this could be an issue. Um, I'm, you know, you're not supposed to really gap these, but I'm gonna run a gap gauge in there just to see see how far, if I can measure how far away these electrodes and anodes have worn. Okay, let's see what we've got. We're at about, what, 50, 54 thousandths. I think you guys can see that. I know that gap on this is, should be around 42 to maybe 44 thou. So it's, they do have some wear to them. Uh, I'm gonna go have a chat with the service manager and relay everything. I'm kind of based on this. I know spark plug should be changed right around 80 to 100,000. And I do speculate that that number six coil has started to let loose. So I'm gonna recommend we do that coil and a set of spark plugs. And uh, we'll give this back to the customer with the understanding that I don't have any real hard data to go off of right now. But this is, uh, this is what I suspect has happened to them. Also, I'm gonna revisit this battery and clean up those terminals with a wire brush just to get away any corrosion that might be actually on the terminals themselves. Uh, not the uh, not the battery terminals, but the um, the connectors, because I don't think that the install person had cleaned out those connectors. They look pretty crusty. So that's the move. Let's see how the customer uh, what they want to do with this. Okay, it's been about a half hour. Uh, the vehicle owner has been informed of what I discovered and have been informed of my recommendations and they have decided to purchase uh, six coils and six spark plugs. And uh, just to compare this new one, we are at 44,000 spark plug gap. And again, the old one, we're up to uh, 54,000. So it does have some wear. That is confirmed based off the, the new one. And they both are the same part number and manufacturer. So they're both Denzos. That being said, I'm gonna pull these out. Uh, we're gonna do the easy side first, and then I'm gonna pop this intake off and uh, do the hard side after that. This little hose is in the way for the EVAP line. I'll get that thing moved. That way we can see. That wiring harness is in the way too. Let's pull that out. I love bolted down wiring harnesses. They're neat and organized. There's another bolt on that. There. Let's get that out of here. Dig these spark plugs out. Okay, got three new ones. Let's drop them down into their hole. I say drop, but I, I will place them into their hole. If you drop them, you run the risk of bending the anode on the plug, and that would be bad. And of course, I will start the threads by hand because cross-threading spark plugs in a cylinder head is also horrifically bad. Now, I'm gonna use the electric to run these threads down, but I will not achieve torque with the power tool. Look towards the bottom, there we go. I will achieve torque by hand. And it bottomed out. Next. Ah, 
time after time. I have to sing this song so I don't get a copyright strike. La la la. Because YouTube does that. Not quitting my day job. Because I can't sing worth the crap. And look at this. So all three of these coils came from the same box. Three, two of them have a little bit of dielectric already in there. And the third one does not. How about that for quality control? And this is colored differently. Okay, let's get some auxiliary grease inside of these boots before they before they go in. And definitely some on this coil here. There. And these bad boys just get dropped right in. I feel them sliding over the plugs so they're not interfering. Next, and uh, numero tres. Uh, let's bolt them in. Torque these bolts, we'll set the plugs back up and reconnect this harness and then we're moving over there to the hard side. I've got to pull this intake manifold off to gain access to uh, the uh, bank number one cylinder head. Click. There we go. And an audible click on the plug tells me it's seated. And two nuts secure the wiring harness to the head. Okay, let's move around to this side and go to work on this intake. Before I pull the bolts off of the intake, I'm gonna go ahead and get all the connectors and hoses removed. That's the brake booster line there. start on bolting this. I think I'll just start from way, way back. I always like to get the hardest bolts first. I can't see. Either. Before I accidentally lose it, I'm going to fix that one that's down there somewhere with a magnet. There it is. And the next one I can't see is right here. Oh, these are kind of tight. Should just be two or three more of these. Oh, I dropped one. Recovered. So, I believe I've got all the bolts removed. Let's apply some upward pressure here with a pry bar. Okay, there is there is something else attaching it. Do you see how it's hinging left and right? There's something on this side that's still holding this down. And I believe, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a plastic tab over there with another bolt in it. So I need to get this this harness out of the way and get that last bolt out. Let's see. 
tight squeeze. Yep, there she is right there. Looks like a 12 millimeter. Okay, now let's see. What? Is there another one? Uh, there's gotta be one in the back. Oh yeah, there is one in the back and it's buried down there. I don't even know if y'all can see it. I'm gonna have to reach in. It's right, right here. I've got my finger on it. It's another 12 millimeter and it's bolted to a, uh, a metal bracket. Yeah, that's gonna be fun to get out of there. Okay. All right, this looks like a job for a locking flex head ratchet and a socket. I'll be able to use this to reach in there. And get a hold of that nut. Yep, got a good bite on it. Normally I would just stick my hand down there with a stubby ratchet or a little wrench, but if you guys haven't noticed, my, my right wrist is a little sore today. I don't know what I did to it. It's just uh, throughout its range of motion, it's just kind of stiff and it, it's got a little bit of pain every now and then. So I'm at reduced capacity today. Again, I'd like to use my right hand on this bolt because I've got better motor skills with this one. I guess all that one-handed work holding the camera is paying off because I seem to have trained my brain to make better use of my my right, or I'm sorry, my left hand, and I just dropped the bolt. Uh, so much for brain training. Uh, magnet to the rescue, I can see it. Good thing it didn't drop far. There we go. Okay, we're getting more motion out of this. I think it's, I think it's free now. Let's see if it's uh, gonna come up enough to get access to those spark plugs. Yep, I can get them out now. Plenty of space. Okay, what I'm gonna do is elevate this, get a pry bar in just to hold it up, and this is gonna give me enough working space here get these uh, coils out. Again, I'll manipulate this uh, connector with a pick ever so slightly and carefully to not break it. There we go. And connector number two. Okay, that third one's a little harder to reach. I think I can get it out of there. Um, oh, there it is. This guy. Yeah, I've got to find different ways to apply force today because I can't really use my, my right wrist, which is unfortunate. Every time I try to apply torque or twist something or pull something, I get that pain. Okay. Loud noises. Break these loose by hand and then use the power feature to run the threads. I don't want to break them loose with the power of the tool because if the socket were to kick sideways or something and break the porcelain, 
on the plug, that porcelain can make its way into the cylinder. And if it hits a valve seat, it will embed itself in the seat, damage the seat, and cause head damage. Which would be bad. old plugs out let's put three new plugs in and same thing as last time I'll start them by hand and then use the power feature to run down the threads and then I will port them by hand I bring you good offering. what it is Another nice, thank you. Good, now I don't have to wait. I don't like waiting. did it again same manufacturer same part number there's a difference in plug and two of them have dielectric and one does not How about that and regardless of the presence of grease I'm still going to install my own and of course there's number three This one had to go, I think it was a weird angle that came out. I didn't see anything that was obvious. Ow. I think it went like so. Yep, that's how that one goes. Yeah. Sounds like a personal problem. It is. I didn't say wrench. Be right back. Okay, the missing wrench lost inside of a Subaru debacle has been has been uh, been fixed. Problem solved. Now I'm back to doing me. Let's get the let's get these. I lost the connectors. What did I do with them? Um. They couldn't have gone far. They're attached to the wiring harness. Why can't I find... Oh, they're over here. Derp or derp. Click. Okay, this is good. We can get this intake back into position and bolt it back down. Ah, bright lights. Unfortunately, there's some studs to help line this up. It's not all just bolts. Okay. And 
I'm gonna start where I left off, which is back there with that uh, elusive little intake bolt on the bracket from the back side. And unfortunately for me, I'm gonna have to make use of my right hand and just reach in there and get this thing in because there's no way I can do this left-handed. I don't even know if there's a way I can do it right-handed either. It kind of hurts. Okay, there's the hole in the bracket. Bolt is through. And I feel threads. What I'm doing is I'm wiggling the intake around ever so slightly trying to match up the bolt with the threads during the intake. And I got it. Okay. Back to the left hand. Now before I go in there to tighten that up, I'm gonna get all the other bolts uh, threaded in. The reason that I'm going to start all of the bolts by hand before tightening anything down is if the intake is shifted or moved slightly, there's a good chance that the last bolt will, uh, will not line up with the threads. And then I'll have to take them all loose again to get the last one in. This is how guys end up cross-threading things. Is they get so far into, into a project and then a bolt doesn't line up and then they just send it. So it's always best to start them all by hand first and then go in and start applying torque. Okay, let's move around to the front and start getting these bolts set up. I'll do the two nuts that are on the studs just to get those handled and taken care of. By the way, the gaskets on this intake are uh, rubber O-ring type and do not require replacement when they're removed. They are reusable. And there's another... I need the magnet to get these last two in. I recall they were quite elusive. All the fasteners are in and they're started. Let's go ahead and uh, torque these down. I'll start from the inside and work my way around to the outside. Click. I swapped over to the 10 socket for this nut. Hey, I'm doing a lot better today deciphering between nuts and bolts. I told you guys that was going to be a point of self-improvement. I just got to be aware of it and then work on it. Okay. Get that sneaky one down there. I see you. This 10 right here. Tool change. Oh, nope, nope. One more. One more hiding out right, right there. Reverse tool change. And that goes right there. Looking good. Let's go ahead and get those uh, two bracket bolts on. Uh-oh, I dropped a can of brake clean. It's gonna blow. It's not cool. There. All right, I'm going in for that harder to reach one first. I need to run the threads down a little more. There. Okay, 
one more bracket right here and I'll get this wiring harness back into its bracket and we will nearly be done oh yeah this temp probe looking thing does anybody know what this is because I do not if you do, uh, let me know about that down in comment land, please. Because I would like to learn. What's holding it up? Something's holding this up. Oh, I see it. It goes on top of a tab and I have it run under a tab. Come up, please. There. Okay, got it. We have a 10 mil bolt and another little 10 mil bolt right here. Huh? Okie dokie. We're done on this side. Okay, a little bit of a uh, tubing left and uh, we can go back into the cabin and start this engine. Uh oh, I don't want to lose my clamp. There we go. Good, and one more up here. Excellent. Okay, my tool slash fastener storage area is now clear, and all that's left is for me to pull these battery terminals and clean those guys up a little bit, get the covers back on, and then uh, recheck everything. Okay. Starting the engine now. Stalling the engine now. Okay, back to the scan tool. Let's go into previous vehicles. Uh, yes, the Lexus. By the way, um, I lied to you guys. I told you this was a uh, 2010 Lexus, and in fact, is a 2011 according to the VIN. I was deceived by the sticker. And let's go ahead and initiate a full system code scan just to see what is there. While this is going, I'm going to go ahead and throw those covers on just to maintain efficiency. Whoa, it's mad at me. I left something unplugged. Yep. That is a camshaft phaser actuator. It, it's what controls variable valve timing. So let's try this again. Okay, let's back out of here, and um, I have to go ahead and clear all this stuff now. Clear all codes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Engine trans ABS, da da da. Okay, everybody's cleared. Let's power it down. I'll do a restart and a code scan again. Now that I've corrected the error of my ways, I will uh, get those covers back on the engine. Now, when I first got here, these two pins, those plastic uh, clips were missing. I only had this one to deal with. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at my box and see if I have any that will fit in there. I don't think I do, but it couldn't hurt to throw some in. On. Good. All right, I did manage to find two plastic clips. They're not the best fitting, but it's better than nothing, so I'll take that. Okay, looking good. Let's go for a ride. Okay, uh, I don't have any latent codes anymore for uh, engine or airbag. Uh, obviously, I did just clear them, and a test drive will be a final confirmation that this problem is solved. Uh, I do have this media malfunction code again. 
Uh, that would require a separate set of diagnostics. Belt tension sensor power source. Oh, oh that's uh, that's airbag stuff for, for the inside. Okay, uh, and that was what I had caused to occur. Camshaft position A circuit. Uh, that was also stored in history. Okay, I'm satisfied with what I'm looking at here. Let's go ahead and back this out and get it on the ROAD and make sure its power band is good and that it drives smooth. I'm backing out the auto. I am bringing this back in because one of the other fellows is gonna do the uh, oil change and uh, obviously they're gonna check on this uh, tire pressure warning indicator that's still on the dash here. But I want to finalize what I have done first before I turn this over to someone else. And I tell you what, I'm on point today. Look at that. I remembered my seatbelt too. Safety third. Okay, first impression is the engine is running smooth and it's got a nice power band so far. And as soon as we get out of this parking lot, I'll get out on the big road, open it up a little bit and make sure that is uh, it's in good shape. Judging from what I've seen so far, I'm uh, satisfied with the condition of this engine and its, uh, and its running quality. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and get this one closed out. I'm all set here. It appears to be running well. All right, guys, this thing's running pretty good. I just did about a 60% throttle pull on it when I uh, when I got out of the parking lot. Uh, there's no holes in the power band. I don't feel any misfires. So this uh, this engine is in good condition as far as I'm concerned and as far as uh, the repairs that I have made are concerned. So all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out. As always, I'd like to thank everybody here for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, the only thing I ask of you is to tap you tap that thumbs up button. That is what uh, gets my content out to other potential viewers who may also like my video, and that's good for me and good for them. Other than that, I'd like to wish all of you the best, and of course, I have to remind everyone here to not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. And let's roll into a wide open throttle pull real quick. Just for a moment. Good downshift. Okay, we're good, that felt excellent. And I'm gonna back it down because I was doing 10 over, oops. Yeah, I gotta be sneaky with that. If you guys remember the Corvette video, I did a wide open pull and then looked up and boom, Florida State Patrol officer coming in the oncoming direction. That could have been bad. Oh, and by the way, I did uh, just reset the radio and, uh, and the clock as well. And yes, it is actually 12.02. So interestingly enough, plugging this in, I had it almost exactly on time. That never happens. But if you think I didn't do that, gotcha. And my work is done here, powering down. Pew. Goodbye, Lexus.